Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon. Happy full moon in Leo. And that's exactly what today's reading is based upon. So I'm actually going to be bringing forth more of a variety of general readings to my Mystic Moon platform. Um, the reason why is because about a month ago, I had done a survey and asked you guys what you wanted to see. So I am bringing this to the channel. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. So the full moon in Leo, what we're going to do is we're really going to focus on our ego and our pride. Okay, but we're also going to focus on our strengths and really shining at this time. So however the cards fall is what we're going to look at. So this full moon in Leo obviously is today and the time frame that we're going to be doing a forecast on is from today all the way till the new moon in Pisces, which takes place on February 20th. So that is what we're going to be looking into. I'm only going to be using three decks here, so I'll put them down below. And I do have a variety of topics that we're going to tap into. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. All right. Very first thing we're going to focus on here is the overall energy. So what is the overall energy that some of you guys might be experiencing from now until new moon in Pisces, February 20th? All right. Let's take a look at this energy. We have believe in the impossible blue moon. Okay. Very cool. I think I'd actually mentioned like a blue moon once in a blue moon in one of my last readings. So if you guys watched that video, there could be a special message for you with that, but believe in the impossible. Well, that's really cool and magical. So let's see what else we need to know here. We have the full moon in Cancer. Let your fears dissolve. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this kind of um, Cancerian vibe to me is some kind of, uh, you know, emotion this emotion that has created a bunch of fear within us. This is about ready to dissolve. So your overall theme for this time frame is going to be something that you thought was impossible you're going to see literally something dissolve in that situation. And you're going to realize that your fears have been running the show. So sometimes our ego and our pride get in the way, create a lot of fears that really shouldn't be there. But somehow that seems to be what we lean into sometimes. It's easier to fear. It's easier to believe the negative than it is to believe the positives. So that's rad. I love it. Wow, I can't believe I just said rad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get a tarot card. We have the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is Gemini's energy, you guys. So the Knight of Swords is a card of movement, that's for sure. It's also a card of communication. It's it's like a challenging though. It's a challenging situation. So what I'm getting you guys is that you are headed towards um like you're going to do something. You're, you're setting your fears aside and you're going to handle something. And this is great because I feel like a lot of you are going to feel very proud of yourself. So this pride is actually going to be a positive because um, some pride may have been getting in your way with making certain decisions or living your life the way that you've wanted to. And you're saying, you know what? Screw this. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm going to handle something. I'm just going to deal with the situation head on. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, I'm cool. And that's like what you need to do to break through to the other side of the situation. So believe in the impossible. Things might, might actually turn out better than you even think because you're willing to just say, you know what? I'm just, I'm not, I'm not afraid anymore. So we have two songs coming through. So we have Not Afraid Anymore by Halsey, which is an amazing song. And that I think is from like 50 Shades Darker, I think. So like number two really cool song. And then um, break on through to the other side by the doors. I don't know. So anyways, there's that. But yes, um, this whole blue moon thing, right? I think that only happens once a year. So it is, it's like not something that, well, I mean, there's lots of moons that only happen once a year, but it's like once in a blue moon. Um, this to me is significant for you. Maybe this is something that you've been afraid of for a really long time. Maybe this is a cycle that has been going on for a very long time. These full moons here, it's a cycle that needs to change. It's a cycle that needs, um, your, it needs your attention. It needs your action. It needs your communication. You need to deal with something. 
So you have an opportunity that's in front of you at this time to be strong like the lion and to handle a situation that you have been afraid of for a really long time. And what's interesting is that you're going to be very proud of yourself. And a lot of this pent up, like you've made it out to be bigger and, and like way worse or maybe even way more important than it really is. When we just face our fear sometimes, it's like, oh my God, that actually wasn't that bad. That's the message I'm getting here. You guys are going to handle something. You're going to handle your business. You're going to handle a situation and you're going to feel amazing afterwards, you guys. And this full moon in Leo is literally giving you the strength and the courage to push you towards handling this. And you're going to be so glad that you did because you're going to feel so much relief. You're going to realize, oh my God, I made this out to be bigger than it really was. It actually wasn't that bad. Who cool. Now I can move forward. Now I can move on. And the thing is, it might even create some sort of shift or change in a situation and make it better. So you won't know until you try, but I feel like you guys have nothing to lose. That's amazing. I love that first message. Okay. Now we're going to go into self love and care. So what do we need to know about our self love and care? You guys during this full moon in Leo to new moon. Oh, here we go. New moon in Pisces. All right. We have the new moon in Sagittarius energy. Luck is on your side. Look at this. You guys, when you just take care of you and you're just authentic to who you truly are, I'm sorry, you can't go wrong. You really can't. I mean, other people not, might not agree. Other people not, might not like what you have to say, but you know deep down that you're doing something that's right for you. And that right there, that inner knowing and inner power, Leo energy, strength card, power, that right there is what's going to get you through to the other side. You see? You're going to have a big breakthrough during this period of time. And the Leo moon is exactly what you need to push forward to handle a situation, to know that something actually doesn't have power over you. And it's not like you have power over it, but you have power of yourself. And that's what matters here. That's what matters. So this, uh, this arrow is literally, you can only go up from here, you guys. You can only go up. Because whatever's going on right now, it's either you're down in the dumps or you're just kind of stagnant. You can only go up when you step into your power and you start handling your life and you start being authentic and truthful to yourself and other people. That is when you're in alignment with your highest good. And that's where we're being directed at this time with this full moon in Leo. I freaking love it. It's so rad. <laughs> All right, what else? Make time for self-love. Oh my gosh, I love this. We are in the self-love and care section of this reading and we get this card. It's amazing. So Libra is very gentle, okay? So of course, the strength card can be very powerful, but if you guys look at the strength card, we have that feminine energy. She's taming the lion with her gentle energy. And then you have that powerful lion, right? So this is gentle. This is not aggressive, by the way. This is not, it's almost like you are taking charge of a situation, but you're not letting your pride and ego like run the show. It's this inner strength. You're kind of restraining yourself from going off. You're not losing yourself in your emotions. You're not completely like losing your shit. It's a totally different, powerful vibe. It's almost like you're in total control of yourself and other people are like, whoa. And when you are not losing your shit, and you're in that controlled mode with yourself because you just know who you are, you're just super sovereign, people pay attention. You get people's attention when you are in that mode. You really don't get people's attention in a positive way when you're freaking out and super emotional and you know blaming them for every, it, you lose people at that point. And I, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I've made that mistake so many times. I can't even tell you. And I used to think, oh, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so uh, strong. I'm so powerful. Bullshit. I seriously have lost my footing so many times. I can't even tell you. 
And I just ended up looking like a weak fool and even feeling like a weak fool. So there's something to be said about owning your power, knowing who you are and not flipping out and just speaking truth. And if other people can't handle it, you don't need to react. You really don't. You state the facts. This is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking. This is who I am. This is what I want. Oh, we're not on the same page. No worries. It's all good. You know? So I feel like you guys have an opportunity to do things that feel good for you. Okay. Making more time for self-love. Are there things that you're participating in that don't truly reflect love, right? So if you're giving your time and energy to someone, but they're not really giving you the same in return, that's not an act of love. That's lopsided shit that we don't need. So it's time for us to make more time for ourselves, to do loving things for ourselves, especially if we're looking for love in all the wrong places, <laughs> looking for love. There's another song, right? I don't know who sings it, but it's from the movie Urban Cowboy. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, start, let's stop looking for love in all the wrong places. And let's start looking for love from within. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay. What else? Nine of wands. You are strong. You guys look at how strong she looks. She's just, she's been through a lot. You guys have been through some shit. I'll tell you that. I mean, I know I have, you guys have been through some stuff, but you're still standing. You still have something. Okay. You still have something to be proud of. So don't look at yourself and think, oh my God, I'm so weak. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. It's very easy to go down that road. I've done that many, many times myself. Look at all the things that you do still have. Look at all the things that you've accomplished. Look at all the things that you've learned. Look at how far you've come. So that is an act of self-love right there. Don't cut yourself down. You know, don't cut yourself down. You can really only go up from here. I mean, you can continue to go down. You can continue to stay stuck or you can go up from here. The choice is yours. And I believe that you guys want to go up. Okay. That's what I see. You want to go up. And that's what this full moon in Leo is representing. You are strong. You are amazing. You are beautiful and you deserve more. It's time for you to start treating yourself the way that you want other people to treat you. That's beautiful. So that's what we have for our self love and care. So now we're going to go into a soul connection. Okay. So this could be any soul connection. We're not really using labels or anything like that, but you know, just take this if it resonates for you. So someone that you're connected to, let's go ahead and take a look at these energies. What do we need to know about the soul connection during this full moon and Leo cycle to the new moon in Pisces? Ooh, a time for healing. Okay. So something needs to heal. It might be that um, somebody else needs to heal. It might be that it's time for you to heal. It might be two people that are healing together. Maybe coming together, having conversations, working things through, or maybe taking times out. Whatever that means to you, this is a time for healing for some soul connection that you have. Ooh, break through the, or I'm sorry, breathe through the tension. I don't know why I want to say break, break on through, breathe through the tension, full moon and Scorpio. Okay. So there could be some tension in the soul connection. There could be something going on, like a challenge or just some misunderstanding or whatever. So the full moon in Scorpio, to me, Scorpio is all about letting go, death and transformation, right? Maybe some of you guys are thinking about ending a cycle, letting go, letting someone go for good, you know, evolving past the situation. It's very painful. But what I'm getting here is that it might be time for you, especially if you're, if you're really, really struggling and you're confused and you don't have clarity. Okay. Because this kind of contradicts the first message. So I'm going to say this first, if you're feeling very emotional, confused, feel very, very lost 
it might not be the best time for you to make permanent decisions. Instead, use this time to heal, to sit with your energy, to figure out why you're feeling so much tension. Really breathe through that tension. That's what we're being asked to do. So it's sometimes things are not so cut and dry. Now, sometimes they are. The very first message that we got was something about handling a situation. You know what you, it's very clear. Nine of Swords is connected to Gemini, which is Mercury's energy. You're very clear. You're very clear. You're thinking clear. You know what you want to say. You know what you want to do. So you're going for it. This is completely different energy, you guys. So if you're not feeling clear, take a time out. Take a breather. You don't have to handle everything today. This full moon in Leo is not going to work for everyone. Sometimes people are just not on that timeline to handle something. So if you're not, that's okay. Don't cut yourself down. Take some space and some time for you. Maybe give someone else time and space. Give someone time to breathe. Give a situation time to breathe. And you might have a better result at the end of the day. You know? I just, there's a few times in my life where I wanted to handle things right away. I'm like, oh God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle this right now. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sleep on it. And when I woke up the next morning, I was like, you know what? I'm really glad that I didn't do it because I don't feel the same this morning. Sometimes literally you guys sleeping on it can help. All right. But sometimes when you know, you just know, and that might be, you know, you know, you need to handle something. So you do. All right. Let's see what else we need to know here. Yeah. Okay. That is the message. Eight of swords. This right here, if you are in this energy with someone, it is not the time to do something. Okay. I mean, you can communicate with somebody, right? But it might not be time for an abrupt, I'm done with you. You know, I, I, I like, I'm, I'm never going to speak to you again. That kind of death energy, final energy, I feel is not going to be um, it might not be good for you in the end. You might regret that decision because you could be highly emotional right now. That Scorpio energy is water and water is all about our emotions. Our emotions right now are getting the best of us. It's creating a lot of tangled webs in our mind. You can see all of these birds here. It's bad news. Those, those black birds, that is fear. That is bad news, baby. So to me, it's like you're not able to really decipher between your intuition and your emotions versus like you don't have enough clarity. You're not thinking clearly. So until you kind of get out of that confusion and get out of that emotional space where, you know, you're feeling like you just want to just finalize something right now, I would just highly suggest waiting until that feeling passes, breathing through it, see how you feel in the morning. Um, because it might be much better um, when you're in a clear space of mind to have a conversation or to handle a situation. So some of you guys know exactly what you want to do, but others, when it comes to a like soul connection that you, you just feel very deeply for someone, you care about someone. So this isn't just like, you know, you just forget it. Like I'm done forever. It's not that simple. And so you do need to take some space and time um, to figure out what you want to do. Don't let your emotions run the show. Don't let your fears, pride and ego also, full moon and Leo, don't let that run the show. Because see, full moon and Leo can either empower you or actually it can disempower you. So it depends on how we're using it. So some of you guys will be using it in a very powerful way, but others of you, especially if you have a lot of um, unhealed wounds and attachment issues and emotions running the show, this won't be a good time for you to make these super like dramatic decisions. So if you want to make a dramatic decision right now and you want to cut someone out of your life, that is purely your ego and your pride talking. Your emotions are running the show. Take some time out. Take a little bit of a breather and then come back to the drawing board and see how you feel. Okay? So there's some sort of healing that's taking place in a soul connection. People are breathing through their tensions. People might also be so confused that it's not a good time to talk. 
It's not a good time to, you know, um, try to figure out how we're going to get out of a mess. If you are dealing with someone that is in another relationship and they're tangled up in a karmic, you know, partnership or situation, this is not going to be the time that they're going to, um, suddenly have the clarity to fix that and to move forward with you. So give people some time and some space, give them and yourself some breathing room and let people handle things instead of trying to have that conversation. Because any conversation that's taking place during this chaotic energy, it, it's, it's all bad. Meaning we're not, you're, people aren't thinking straight. They're not hearing straight. They're only hearing what they want to hear. It's not good. It's not good. So I feel like if you guys also feel stuck or you feel like a soul connection is just toxic for you, again, same message. Breathe, take some time to think about things, and then when you're feeling stronger and you're not feeling so confused, then maybe go back to that drawing board and figure out what you want to say, what you want to do in a situation, okay? Now, not everybody is going through a challenging time in their connection, but for some reason, this is what is coming through um, this reading today. So must be, you know, a lot of people going through something. Remember guys, just take what resonates for you. Now we're going to go into our soul tribe. So our soul tribe is our family members, our friends, our coworkers, people that we have come into this life with to have experiences with. We're learning from them, whether it's positive or negative, they are part of our tribe. So what do we need to know about our soul tribe? Ooh, we have new moon and Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. That's awesome. I love to see that card. Ooh, this one just, actually we have two just shot out, so I'll take them both. Ooh, we have think it through, new moon and Gemini. Interesting. And we have cool your emotions, full moon and Aries. So check it out, you guys. That soul connection is also connected to this person that's in your soul tribe, soul group, right? Okay, you came together for a reason. So your hard work all right, your hard work of thinking it through and cooling your emotions will pay off. Do you see this? It will pay off, okay? Love it. Yeah, four swords, take a breather, take a time out, take care of yourself, just relax, that's it. So yes, that's the message here. So the soul connection is the person that is also connected to your soul group, your soul family. And even if it's a different situation, you guys, this, the message still applies. Your hard work of thinking things through, okay? Because Aries energy is very, very fiery, okay? My Lilith is in Aries, my Mercury is in Aries. So I don't always think things through. My thinking is very emotional sometimes. So <laughs> sometimes I have to come back down and there are people in my life that I do ask for their intervention because I know I am losing my shit that say, you need to come back down. I'm going to talk you off the edge, right? So that those decisions that I have made when I have cooled my emotions and I've really thought things through and I've just kind of pulled back to maybe sleep on it, right? We just literally talked about sleeping on something that actually paid off better in the end for me. So not everything that we're feeling, you guys, do we have to act upon. This right here is a uh, mixture of energy. We have mental mercury energy here. So it's air logic. And then we have that fire, which is passion in my belly. I need to do something right now. So these mix together. It's trying to find that balance within both of those, those energies and sleeping on it, taking a time out, taking a breather. This is going to work better in all areas of your life, not just with this person, not just with the people in your tribe family, work situations. This is just going to be a better off. You're going to be better off communicating and dealing with things in life in this way, because not everything we need to react to. Okay. We pick and choose our battles. That's such a, that, that's such a great statement. And it's so true. Pick and choose your battles. You guys, not everything needs your attention. Not everything needs a response. Not everything, you know, not, not everything needs something. 
Sometimes it's okay to just take a break. Sometimes it's okay to just not do anything. Sometimes it's okay to just take care of yourself. So not every invitation that comes towards your way do you have to take. Not every person that calls do you have to pick up the phone. Not every text that comes your way do you need to, to take. Not every client that comes your way do you need to work with. There's just certain things that if it doesn't feel good for you, you can simply just say, you know what? I'm going to disengage. I'm going to pull away. I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to deal with this. It is okay. So for some reason, our soul tribe, there could be some things where we're trying to find balance. We're trying to find um, time for us. We're trying to find a happy medium to where we can work with others and, and take care of others, but also take care of ourselves. That's great. So if you're feeling irritable because you know, there's so many people that are asking you for this or asking you for that. That is an indication that you're being taken advantage of, but you might not have an inner voice. I'm sorry. You might not have, um, that the, the ability to speak and to be authentic, to tell people, you know what? Yeah, no, I, I don't want to do that. No, that doesn't sound good to me. No, 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 no. I'm good. Some of you might have a hard time with that. And so what ends up happening is then we end up getting pissed we end up being passive aggressive, right? We end up cutting people out of our lives because we can't, we can't communicate with them, you know, because there's something that they're saying or doing that we're upset with and we don't have, know how to regulate our own emotions and we can't think straight, so we end up just cutting them off or we end up flipping out on them. And those things usually don't end up feeling, they don't end up feeling super great in the end. Because then you're ha you have a lot of unfinished business, you have a lot of things that you wish you would have said differently or done differently, a lot of regret, etc. So for me, let's just learn. Let's let's put more hard work and dedication into loving ourselves. And sometimes loving ourselves means the word no, <laughs> means the word no, I'm good. And one way that I have found that is really a nice balance response for me is, you know what, I'll get back to you. <laughs> You know what? Let me think about that because I, and I think I've said this before, but when I did the retreat way back in 2018, I think it was, I said yes to everything. I was very excited. I was so happy to meet everybody and oh my gosh, so many people wanted to work with me. So many people wanted to do this and do that. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. We'll do it all. We'll do it all. Yes, yes, yes. I was in such high spirits. And when I got back home and then I had probably 50 emails coming at me at one time of all these people that were like, Hey, we, you know, we said, we're going to do this. You said, we're going to do that. And I was just like, Holy smokes. Some people I did not respond to horrible because I couldn't, I didn't know how to say no. So guess what? Those people probably thought, yeah, mystic moon. She's such a bitch. She's not who I thought she was. Unfollow, see you later, whatever. It probably happened, you know, but that was because I did not have the tools at that time to let people down and I wanted to be such a people pleaser and I wanted to do it all, but I couldn't. I was not balanced at that time. But now I'm going to think it through before I just emotionally go, yes. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not really sure. Let me get back to you. You know what? Let me think about it. That would have worked much better, you guys, but I didn't do it. <laughs> so hard work on yourself, learning who you are, learning by your mistakes. It also has to happen that way too, will really pay off for you in the end. So I have no idea if anything that I just talked about resonates with some of you guys out there when it comes to work, family members, friends, but there is some sort of middle ground that you have to come with in your, within yourself in order for you not to feel so either irritated or angry or um, constantly reacting out of a, what I love to call trauma response. <laughs> like how many times in your life do you think that you have reacted to someone from a trauma response, right? It happens. So when that happens and shit falls apart, shit hits the fan, we got all kinds of issues and problems. We do get to sit with ourselves and say, you know what? I might have been better off not saying that, or I might have been better off not um, reacting when I was in such a way. So we learn as, as we make mistakes. And I just feel like the hard work and dedication that you give to yourself by working on yourselves, sitting with your energy, doing things that are, are loving towards yourself, the, the better you're going to get at this the better you're going to get at this. And the better that you get at taking care of yourself, the better your life is going to become.
that is what we have. So now we're going to go into our career and finances, you guys. What's going on with our career and finances? Whoa. All right, so this just fell on my lap. We have full moon and cancer, a personal issue reaches resolution. Okay. So I wonder what this is about. Sorry, that was way too many cards. All right, let's just get one. We have new moon and Aries. Okay. So a personal issue reaches resolution and we have go for it. So water and fire energy here. Okay. Something that we've been feeling, something that we've really wanted. Now we have this like, yes, go for it. The answer is yes. Do something. Let's see what this is about. We have the uh, three of pentacles. Fantastic. The three of pentacles, you guys, is a work card, but it's also about collaborating and working with other people. So right now, when it comes to your work, um, it might be that it's better to work with people, like work with other people. Now, it doesn't mean you have to you know, work with a large amount of people. This could just be one other person, but you're connecting and collaborating. You're working together where your weaknesses are, the other person's strengths are, and vice versa. This is about being open to new ideas. This is about two heads being better than one. So I feel like if you guys are being drawn right now to work with another person or there's a project or someone has a certain talent and you have something else to bring to the table, this is a really good time for you guys to just start moving towards this project and working on something together. And whatever issues like th that was before, like you had a personal issue, maybe your personal issue was, I don't like working with other people. I hate people. You know, a lot of people feel that way or I'm just so overwhelmed. Now, what we just looked at with the soul group cards, some of us don't know how to act in situations. We don't know how to talk about what we need. We don't know how to be honest with people. We don't know how to say no. We don't know how to articulate ourselves. So it makes it difficult to have relationships and work well with others. So I feel like if that was your personal issue, if that resonated with you, you are being asked to go into a situation with a group of people and try it on for size. Maybe use some of your tools, your new tools, and maybe go about things or try to go about things differently. Maybe use some of those tactics that we just talked about. If people come to you and say, hey, let's do this, let's do that, and you're just kind of like, I'm not really sure. You know, yes, let's go for it. Let's do this. Let's do that. Maybe try, you know what? Let me think about it. That might work for you. Okay. That might work for you to really think about what people want to do and what they want from you. And in your own time and space, you feel comfortable to kind of, you know, let it, let it roll around in your mind, let it marinate for a bit. And then you're like, you know what? I, I do feel good about this. I, I, that is actually something I want to do. And then you know that it's coming from what you want to do. So I feel like that's a message. That's a message for you guys, how to regulate yourselves in group situations. And maybe when it comes to other people that are saying, let's do this, let's do that. Ask for a little bit of time to think about it and come to your own conclusions because of this personal issue that you might have where you feel like you're constantly being, you know, like you're only doing what other people want you to do or you don't have a voice. We're not going to fix this issue unless we're actually in the pit, right? It's kind of like going to, um, going to a therapist your entire life and you have all kinds of issues with people, and, um, you know, communicating and just being around people, et cetera. And you've got all these tools, right? But then you constantly avoid people. We're not really working out any of our issues if we're not being put into those situations, right? So of course we feel great. We feel great. Oh my gosh, this is so great. I feel so good. This and that. But then, you know, once we enter into reality where we have to actually deal with people or work with people, then we fall apart because we haven't had an opportunity to use these tools. So anyways, my point is when it comes to work in your career, it is time for you guys to allow yourselves to work with others, allow input from other people, but do it 
how it works for you. And if some of you guys are afraid, you've been letting your fear hold you back, okay? And you don't have a bunch of personal people issues, but you've been letting your fear hold you back. For me, this is saying this is a yes, go for it card. Work with that person, team up with that person. It's time. This is actually going to uh, be a positive success. This is going to be some positive experience for you. I also feel like if some of you guys are waiting on whether you should take that job, you should do this, you should do that, you should apply here, you should invest in your you know, education, et cetera, this is all yes. This means kind of like get over your insecurities and just go for it. Definitely do it. So I hope that makes sense. All right. So now we're going to go into life purpose. Sometimes our life purpose is not the same as our career and finances, you guys. Ooh, we have expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. Nice. Ooh, I love this. Another card of balance, finding balance, finding the middle road. Okay. So I have some things that are already coming up for, for me. In this okay so we have the ten of wands all right so the ten of wands is feeling overwhelmed what's interesting here is you see these pathways right so we see like this windy road right she's traveling down that was really tough being up there it was really really tough now she's here now she can finally walk this middle road so I feel like that 10 of wands is a card of pressure. It's a card of feeling overwhelmed. It's a card of feeling like, oh, I just absolutely don't feel happy with my life. Um, so what I want to say about that, you guys, is that not everybody has the luxury. It's just a fact. Not everybody has the luxury of doing what they love to do in this life. Now, th wh where there's a will, there's a way. You know, you see these people I mean, I see certain people on, you know, either social media or YouTube, and I'm just like, wow, that person, m m they, they love what they do and they're able to make money at it and they just love what they do every single day. That's amazing, right? And we look at these people and we're just like, wow, obviously they worked for it. Obviously it didn't just fall into their lap. I mean, I guess it could in some situations, but... This person worked for it. This person obviously started somewhere and they built themselves up. It takes hard work and dedication to get to that point. Now, some of us feel like, oh my God, that's just too hard. It's too overwhelming. Some of us even try and then we fail. It doesn't work out. So I just feel that when it comes to our life purpose and our mission, it's, it's like this constant pressure of you got to find your purpose. You got to find your mission. Says who? You know, we also are living in this 3D reality planet earth and the currency here is money and we need money to survive we need money to pay our bills we need money to go to the doctor we need you know you need money now it doesn't have to be our entire uh you know like drive in life to make money sometimes people can completely get off balance where money is the only thing that matters they become very power and money hungry and that also is not good either but I feel like that's what that find the balance is. If some of you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I need, I need to be living my purpose and mission and I need to be earning my living doing my purpose and mission. Some people are just not able to do that. And that's okay. You're not a failure. You're not a failure for that. But this is about starting to add things into your life that, you know, you're doing while you're doing your normal job, while you're working your nine to five or whatever it is that you do to make money. And then starting to incorporate your purpose and your mission, doing things on the side that bring you joy and peace, sharing your gifts with the world. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to be black and white is what I'm getting here. This is about finding your way in a balanced way. So don't overwhelm yourself with this pressure of, I have to be living my purpose and mission. I also have seen this a lot in the twin flame community. Okay. The twin flame community, um, promotes this idea that you cannot live out your purpose and your mission without your twin flame. Look, I'm going to really hold back on what I want to say about that. 
But to me, we came into this life as individuals. That's just my belief system. And you don't need anyone else to complete you for your purpose and your mission. Okay. You can be inspired and influenced by a person, but they don't have to physically be with you in a union in order for you to be in purpose or mission. So that's a very burdensome feeling. That puts a lot of pressure on someone. I mean, just think about it, you guys. People that have been told by certain psychics and 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 readers out there that's saying, like, you have to get together with this person or else you can't be this individual in mission. So what people do is it creates a lot of pressure for them to make this connection work. Well, let's just say the other person doesn't want it. Let's just say the other person has another family and they're, they're in another, like they're in a cycle with someone else. So we're going to feel like failures because we're not with that person. It's ridiculous. So I feel like what these cards are trying to tell us, you guys, is that when you can start just getting more in, like living your life in the, like on that middle road and instead of being far left or far right, which we also know can, you know what I mean? Be like very extreme with views as well. It's like finding that middle road and traveling that road and that road, you are at least moving forward. It might not be in this like crazy extreme energy here, this crazy extreme energy over here, but it's less burden. It's less burdensome because you feel more peaceful. So when it comes to your life purpose, what I'm getting here is that you can expect powerful changes to come into your life when you drop a lot of these narratives and stories that you're telling yourself that you're not good enough or that you're not adding anything positive to the world because you're not in your purpose and your, and your mission. What I'm getting here is that you guys do all have a purpose. And if you haven't found it yet, that's okay. You're not a failure at all. And not everybody's purpose looks the same. So when we also compare ourselves to other people that we believe are on purpose and mission, you know what that does? All it does is burden us. All it does is make us feel like shit. And let me tell you, I've looked at people on social media and felt like dog shit about myself. So it does happen. And what I've learned to do is how about I just don't do that? How about I just don't go on social media and look at these things? It doesn't make me feel good. It makes me feel like a fucking failure. So there's just certain things that we need to drop. We need to drop certain things that we do, certain stories that we're telling ourselves, certain belief systems that people have embedded in us, and just give ourselves some time to just be okay with where we're at right now. And if you really feel like you have a particular purpose and mission or, or, or something that you want to explore, then you can do it even when you're living a normal you know, like just everyday life of either a nine to five or, you know, doing something that might not be in complete and total alignment with you. So this is about adding some of that to your routine. And when you find balance in that, it might be that you realize you don't have to completely do this one thing to be in your purpose. You can work and do this on the side and you're in purpose. I think that people just get in their mind that they have to fully be immersed in what they love to do and to, to be in purpose and mission. It's just not true. That's a, that's a story that we tell ourselves and that puts a lot of pressure on us that can't do it. There's lots of things you guys that I want to do. Okay. Lots of things that I want to do, but I also have to survive and I also have a business to run. So when I look at it from, in this very black and white mindset, I feel like, oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I, I sucks. I, I'm not able to do this. I'm not able to do that. But the thing is, I, when I make time to add, let's just say one day out of my week to go towards this purpose and mission, why can't I feel good about that? Why does it have to be all or nothing? So when we can get more to this state, we can expect powerful changes. Doesn't have to look like everybody else's. It doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You guys, let's find a more balanced state of mind and feel good about ourselves right now and feel good about what we can do. Let's stop focusing on what we can't do. All right. Yes. I'm speaking to myself when I say these things. <laughs> 
All right, now we're going to go into our spiritual ascension. So what is going on with our spiritual growth and ascension right now during this full moon Leo? Be bold and make the first move. Ooh, okay. What is this about? So see, there's some very strong Leo energy coming through, but then there's also that like, make sure that your strength isn't coming from ego and pride. Okay. And we have reveal what needs to be seen. Okay. So this is about a mystery. This is about something that maybe we've been hiding from or something that we haven't been 100% honest about. So it's saying be bold and make the first move. Bring something out into the light. Make something known. What is this? And we have the seven of pentacles. So the seven of pentacles is a card where we are looking at something and we are growing. You can see here growing the seed. We've made, we planted some seeds and we're looking at the progress of these seeds. So something that we've been working on, something that we have been, you know, just kind of maybe even taken inventory of because that seven of pentacles is like a card of like, we're looking at our stock. We're looking at what we have so far. We're looking at what the tools that we have to work with. So this is basically saying here, what are we hiding from? Are we hiding from something? Are we scared to do something with all these things that have sprouted up? Are we scared to use these tools? What is this? So what I'm getting here, you guys, is that when it comes to your spiritual ascension, like you have grown, you have something that has happened to you. You have had a revelation you, you now see something for the truth. You see something for how it really is. So you now are being asked to do something with this knowledge, with this wisdom. Be bold and make a move with what you've learned, what has come to you, a vision. Share this vision. You know, talk about this vision. Write about it. Reveal what needs to be seen and heard. So some of you guys are very spiritually gifted. And you have some information that's coming to you and it is going to take your strength and your courage, right? To reveal to something or someone what you have heard or seen, whether it be in a vision, whether it's something that, you know, you got from your higher self, something that has been shared with you, you're meant to share with others. So a part of your spiritual ascension is that a lot of your frequencies have been cleared. A lot of your, um, maybe just sometimes we can have a lot of, um, you know, just like clogged up energy, energy cords, all that other stuff to other people, influences, a lot of things that are jamming up our frequency. Well, what I'm getting here is that your frequency is tr uh, quite clear and strong right now. And because of that, you're being given some gems. You're being given some things that you're meant to now work with and use and help perhaps even other people to spiritually grow and ascend. So if you identify yourself as being like a light worker or some kind of a star seed, I feel like you guys are being given something and you're meant to share it with other people with what you're being shown or what you're hearing. So that's pretty cool. I really, really like that. So your frequency is clear, you're hearing clear, you're hearing things, you're seeing things, and these things have something to do with spiritual ascension. And now it's time for you to be strong and make a move on what you know. Very, very interesting. All right, you guys. So our last message here, and it looks like my, my uh, music paused. I don't know why. Um, lessons and karma. All right. What are the lessons in karma? Lessons and karma for this cycle. The energy is gaining momentum. Waxing moon. Okay. Waxing moon is about drawing something in. Gaining something. And then we have the full moon and Gemini. Embrace the flow of life. Very cool. Oh, there's my music. Okay. Ooh, we have the tower. Wow. Okay, you guys. This is cool. So tower is extreme energy. Tower actually, to me, 
is probably one of the most feared cards in tarot. To me, it's even worse than death because the tower is a complete and total destruction of your life. Now, I know it sounds really scary, right? That's why it's like the most feared car in tarot or card in tarot. But the tower is necessary. A tower moment. You've heard that before, right? Something is happening here. So lessons and karma, something that no longer is working or serving you in a positive way is crumbling down. You've been holding on to it for too long. You have not let the energy flow. You've been holding on to it so tight, trying to control it, giving all your time and energy to it. Spirit says, enough is enough. This isn't working. So this energy of something crashing down and not working is building and building and building. And it's happening to you for a reason because it's a karmic cycle that needs to be let go. You're not flowing with life anymore because you're too focused here. You're focused on something that isn't working. You're focused on something that needs to crumble. You need to change. You need to flow again. And we're resisting this change. So to me, this is one of those divine intervention cards. God works and does things for you that you can't do for yourself sometimes. And sometimes when that tower energy strikes, it's not on our terms. It's on the universe's terms. And sometimes that can really suck because we had opportunities. We had opportunities to do this. We had opportunities to change. We had opportunity, you know, all those things. So when the tower comes in, it's like, well, you had time, but you didn't do anything. So bam, here you are. The necessary change that you need so you can now start flowing through life. So if some of you guys find that certain things are crumbling down, things um, just suddenly fall apart, Really try to flow through these changes instead of trying to hang on to what's falling away or fading away because you're, you may be blocking your own good at this time because of something that you refuse to change in your life. So a lesson in karma, this is an indication here. It's just something that's been burdensome in your life and it needs, to, it needs to be let go of so you can flow once again. So you can basically draw to you more of what is good for you instead of constantly being in the state of lack. Okay. This could be anything. This could be a relationship. This could be a job. This could be your health. This could be where you live. This could be anything. So whatever we resist, whatever we hang on to for dear life. And if something is trying to fade or fall away, the more that we hold on, the more pain we're going to be in. So whatever is crumbling down, let it crumble. Let the dust, dust settle and embrace the flow of this change rather than saying, nope, I can't let that go. Nope, I, I, can't, I can't move forward into the new. There's some, build, there's some pressure that's building with this energy is gaining momentum. There's something that you know needs to change. And we can sit there and we can put our head in the sand all day long, but the tower's coming anyways. The tower's coming anyways. And I'm not trying to say, oh my gosh, the tower is coming for all of you guys that are watching this video at some point um, from now until the uh, new moon in Pisces. This is the prediction. No, the tower doesn't have to happen for everybody. Sometimes we can avoid the tower by making the necessary changes ourselves. Do you get it? <laughs> so do your work, you guys. Let go of things that you need to let go of. Don't connect to anything that makes you feel anxiety-filled or toxic or heavy or burdened. Try to let those things go. Learn to love yourself instead. Do more loving things for you. And the way we treat ourselves is what shows up in our lives. So let that be the energy that gains momentum, flow, good, positive, growth, abundance, instead of fear, clinging, depression, sadness, dependency, you know, desperation. Let's not let that energy gain momentum anymore. Let's make the shift. So that's what I have for you guys for this full moon in Leo. I really hope that you guys enjoy this reading. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. All right, you guys take care. Bye-bye.